Hello everybody and welcome, it's Vidan here, so glad that you can tune into another video. Today I'm going to show you how to kill Elite Dread Balloon on Cubism in 950,000 or less. And in fact, it can be pushed really quite easily, okay? So this is just my um, strategy that I kind of came up with. And then what's quite funny is my good friend Feed Me Pie did a run um, that was kind of going alongside mine, but we didn't have any conversation or discourse between us whatsoever, and he's just beaten it by 1,000, um, doing a kind of different strategy as well. But either way, this is going to be um, hopefully somewhat quite easy to follow, so you shouldn't have to spend too much monkey money, and it should secure you a nice top 50. So we're going to be rocking with Adora and a free dart. Then what we're going to do is, for the farming situation, I'm going to go for a um, bank, then I'm going to sacrifice a bank into Anopolis and get a BRF, okay? So let's just go through that slowly. We're going to start with at the end of round eight, we should be able to go and afford our first farm. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually just upgrade this first farm directly to 230, okay? So all we're going to do with this farm that we put down is just put it to 230. Get the top path first, then get the middle two. And then by around round 25 or something um, is when you will be able to get it to a bank, okay? So you should be able to defend perfectly with Adora here. Obviously, she's going to be extremely strong. And um, I always like using Adora when we can. Never underestimate the power of Adora when she synergizes with temples because it's just unbelievable. Okay, so after round 25, get your bank. Um, you can turn auto star off there just to be a little safe to make sure you get the full bank collection. Now, just we have to remember that we've only got one life, right? Because we're on impoppable. So I'm literally, first, because we're going to get camos, I'm going to go and get a 030 NG. Okay, so this is going to be eventually upgraded to an overclock, but it's going to help us with cleansing foam to decamo any of the balloons. And then we're going to literally save up for a balloon trap. So super, super casual, but easy way to defend, right? Um, because obviously the balloon trap, when we do get the opolis, is going to start earning a lot of money as well. And also it just makes defense easy. So it's it's not like super optimal, but at the same time, there's much worse options you can do than this for least cash. So uh, I think we should take it. Okay, so on round 36, collect from the bank. It should be full. Now you can go and get your balloon trap. Then what we're going to do is we're going to place down a triple discount villages and literally just save until we can start getting opolis. But that's only going to happen actually during the tier one kill itself. Now, I didn't do really any balloon trap micro whatsoever. As you can see, I'm on double speed. And even with this half hazard approach, we're going to have more than enough eco to deal with. So, I mean, in, to be honest, this getting balloon trap thing could be entirely skipped. You could probably get some cheap defense instead, um, miss out balloon trap, and just get an opolis earlier. Because you'll see from tier 5, we have like over 200,000 spare, okay? So, this is not essential. It's already something that could immediately save you, you know, like um, 5,000. But on a side note, whilst we're doing the tedious stuff of setting up the um, free double discount villages, just want to say thank you guys so much for a thousand subscribers. Honestly, it was super, super amazing to see um, such amazing support from the last couple of videos. And I know it's been a while, but me and Van Chica did just get married. So thank you for all the congratulation statements on that. Uh, do really all appreciate it. So we're just going to keep on going. Had a little break. Um, we did get a little sick during the time as well. I think whenever it's October, I always get a little bit of freshers flu from being based around university so it just wipes us out but we're on good form today okay so now it's the end of round 39 what we're going to do is we're just going to literally start round 40 with no defense there's no need to worry here whatsoever i mean he moves that slow it's almost a little annoying in some circumstances okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go and buy monkey town and then monkey city using our cash that's just going to be generated from the um, standard round income and the balloon trap i'm going to let the bank keep um, collecting so i believe after this next balloon trap collection we should be able to go and afford the monkey city and now what we want to do is we want 5,000, okay? So we need to have 5,000 between the cash we have um, standing and the cash in the bank. Once you've got that, you know, it's very simple maths. Um, then you can go and get your monkeyopolis straight away. And now I'm going to go and place a triple discount village again, okay? That's going to serve as purpose to build our temple around. Now, I know it seems annoying with all these triple discounts, but trust me, whenever you get a super monkey, you always want a triple discount on um, least cash at least. 
Also, if you do have any spare discount villages left at the end, there's no harm in that because we can just sacrifice them to Adora, which is a big part of tier five. But of course, the placements here are not optimized because as you saw there, I did have to buy a bigger radius on one of the villages because I literally just lined them up in a straight line just to make my life easy. But now we've got a super down. What I'm going to go and do is go and place down a banana farm. So this is going to eventually become a BRF. And in the meantime, we can just go and get it to free two zero. Okay, make sure it's in range of triple discount. Now, round 45 can be a little bit of the scarier ones. So make sure you use Adora's ability on round 45 just in case. Okay, and then I think you're going to be... Um, pretty pretty much good on this so i do apologize as well this will be a bit of a longer video but for the future tiers when there's not as much like kind of um particular setup to do then i'll just kind of fast forward it a bit and if you want to put it on slow motion you can do um to see exactly what goes on but as always take these as kind of a bit of inspiration for your own runs um because like i said i just literally did this as just a kind of on the wing just having a little feel for what kind of strategies there are but okay enough of the rambling so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to literally place down a 230 glue and try and get it to 240 as soon as possible okay so we're going to get our glue strike just you know keep a little bit of your um, mind occupied on the fact it's least cash so you're going to want to make sure the glue strikes in triple discounts and all that kind of stuff and now we can start upgrading our super monkey and just basically use the glue strike ability as actively as you can um it's going to play a big role throughout this run of course since it's dread balloon so now we've got our super monkey to 220 um, and we can have a scope to do quite a few things here, but you see, because timed bosses are so superior, all the strategies um, kind of involved in them are ingrained in my head, so I just thought, you know what, we're in no rush here, let's go and prioritise a bit of eco, even though obviously it's least cash, so we don't really want to be doing that, but um, I'm too used to it, and it makes life easy enough for us, so all we're going to do is go and get our farm that it was previously um, 320, we're going to make sure now it's 420, so we're going to have our BRF, in range of the opolis and that's going to start generating some nice money for us which will make life a lot easier and we can also now just easily buy any of the defense that we need to during this part of the um, video okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start building up a overdrive okay literally all you need is an overdrive um to defend this tier actually as long as you can get overclock as well and we'll alk buff it always worth getting an alk buff just to help with the rock balloons and stuff as well um so now we're just going to get an alk buff and now we can proceed to save up again if we want to go and get overclock so you can see the kind of um timed bosses in me that's we're getting brf and overclock as soon as possible but honestly them kind of ideas do help because it is all about trying to use as little as possible and for the money overclock and brf and opolis are all extremely good value for money so we're not actually being too stupid here okay so now we've got overclock up we're going to keep perpetually using the um, glue strike ability and now luckily we're going to be earning some decent money so we can just basically start shredding the tears we're going to get the alchemist to um, stronger stimulant now and now this is the bit that can be a little bit scary when it's immune to magic but what i'd recommend is if you want you can always just chuck on an overclock onto the overdrive for this particular portion he's going to get killed really quickly and as you can see the timing's actually lined up really quite well so that when the boss is right over our overdrive it's in the immune to magic phase so we didn't have any issues with the rock balloons there and now i'm just going to go and upgrade it to a savitar so we're going to get our sun god and um, we're absolutely fine i know it looks a little bit closer on round 57 but if you think we've got our brf overclock opolis a decent amount of defense set down we're going to be in a very nice position to continue with this okay of course though if you think you're going to get a score similar to mine then try and kill it quicker to beat me on time say um if you want to do it like exactly by exactly um that'll be a funny snipe actually if someone gets the exact same score but um beats me by like a good five ten minutes that'd be funny anyway okay for tier two what we're going to do is we're going to start upgrading two of the villages near the savitar and this is purely so we can get at least twenty five thousand worth of support sacrificed to the temple in the future okay all we can do with the overclock by the way is i'm putting it on the brf for now i know we've got enough defense for a good portion of this time so let's just go and make some eco okay so i've upgraded the villages to the bottom path two of them so i've got at least 25k worth of support sacrifices and i'm also going to now go and get an archmage wizard which is going to act as a fifty thousand pounds um temple sacrifice for the magic bonus okay and magic is like super super strong so i'd recommend getting magic um sacrifice to your temple but 
if you don't, you know, you could save 50k on this strategy. But I do think it would probably have some kind of important part to it, okay? So literally, just keep overclocking the BRF, and all we're going to do is save up for Archmage. That's also going to add a nice bit of little defense for us as well to make life easy. So I'm basically just setting up everything that we need to get the temple, because then all it's going to be a case of doing is literally just saving for the temple. So it's making life easy. The last thing that I want to do, we're going to get some primary sacrifice to it as well. About 20, 25,000 that adds a little bit of bonuses to the temple so of course that's going to come from the tax zone which i do think is probably very smart to do for tier two because the rock balloons in the magic immunity phase would probably cause a lot of trouble so obviously um, i think it's wise to go and get tax zone and we will indeed do that we can also get an ice monkey down as well actually um that would just help a little bit but yeah okay so what i'm gonna do is now um because to, to kind of save your ears from hearing me rambling too long, I'm going to kind of um, leave you during the tier kills and then interject with any comments along the way, okay? And I will fast forward the tier kills because, in my opinion, they're quite straightforward. It's not like the least tiers boss where we had to be really, really kind of focused on making sure to get it right. So all I've done, I've put down an ice, we've got tax zone, and now we can literally just begin to start saving, okay? So I will um, interject if there's any kind of issues. And one more thing, I'm going to set up a support chin up try and get that in a double or triple discount range this is literally going to be so useful for tier 5 because we can obviously move down or move around a perma brew for example get everything perma brewed we can move around a tax zone which we will indeed do and also we can generate a little bit of extra more money and do a tiny bit of stalling although infinite stalling doesn't exist anymore it's a useful tower to have for its price um, but yeah, in the meantime, all you need to do is literally just keep your eyes focused on the game and you should absolutely shred it. If things get a little bit scary, as it's looking here, you can always overclock your tax zone as well to be super safe during the immune to magic phase. But if you followed everything like me, hopefully Dread Balloon's in a good position where um, the immune to magic phase will not last long. Okay, so since the boss kill, all I've done is literally overclocked the BRF and just saved up. And you should now have enough to be able to sacrifice all of this to get your um, temple that should be boosted with magic primarily. But you should also have a bit of primary and it should be a support temple so we get the discounted prices. I just went for a 25k one, um, but you can go for a 50k one if you want. I know the player Feed Me Pie did that, um, doing a completely different approach, which is quite funny. In the meantime, now it's time to start setting up some triple discount villages or just double discounts. I keep saying, when I say triple discount, by the way... I mean free double discount villages, so I know that's a little bit confusing. Um, but the reason I want to do this is so whenever I'm putting kind of sun gods down, that they're always going to be in a triple discount, okay? So first thing I'm going to place is a sun god, of course. And then all it's a case of doing now for the entirety of the video, which is a little bit tedious, I must admit, it's going to be literally building up Savitar spam and Tax Zone spam. And that's literally going to be pretty much the bulk of it. Obviously, we'll get like Cripple Mob down and Homeland um, and another Glue Strike down, for example, and Super Brittle. So we get the debuffs and buffs. But other than that, it's literally a case of spamming. The one thing that I will say is, is where I place the towers, you may find it beneficial because... After a test run I did before, where I'd got a score just over a million, it kind of gave me a better insight into where to place the towers to coincide with certain immunity phases. So, for example, I know that I want the tax to primarily dominate the kind of middle and to the top right side of the track, because that's when it's going to go into the magic immunity phase. So, in the meantime, I can literally start building sabotars on the left-hand side, like left, middle, left, bottom. Um, and also, don't be worried if they are a bit far down, as long as they're in range of a temple remember we're going to be sacrificing stuff to adora so their range is just going to go absolutely crazy okay and so since i've got a couple of savitars down now all i'm going to do is make sure to go and get a 502 village down that will obviously save us a lot of money for when we're building an overdrive and tax zone spam okay so we're thinking about money we're going to get the top path village we're going to get it in range of triple discount and we're going to make sure um that to place this down first before we start placing down any of our tax so we can just try and of utilize as many discounts as we can get on our towers that we're placing down okay and then from here 
gets a little bit tedious, we're going to basically just save and save and then just start spamming all the towers down, okay? And that's literally going to be it for the rest of the video. So it will leave you a lot of kind of freedom for what you want to do in your approach. But the idea, sabotage and magic primarily towards a bit of the left hand side and then a lot of tacks on the right hand side and then everything should kind of work out nicely there will be a few points though that i will mention on tier 5 for example i needed to stall the rounds a little bit and i did a um trial and error approach that somewhat worked now just a word of caution when you get cripple um, as Bolter has mentioned in a previous video of mine when I've done Dread Balloon, I accidentally set him on strong. Don't set the cripple on strong, it won't hit the boss, okay? Set him on first, then you're going to be sorted, okay? So get the cripple and um, make sure, at least for the main part of it, he's on first. Obviously, you can change it to targeting however you want, depending on the circumstances, but first over strong is usually the wiser option, okay? And what I'd recommend to do now is start getting a lovely overdrive spam going, okay? So, um, I will go and fast forward this part, but um, if you need to see anything in slow motion, then feel free to slow down the video. Also, I do need to add some music, I think, so if anyone's got any ideas, let me know, because obviously I don't want it just to be hearing um, the game volume or the game audio sorry in like four times speed because i find it actually quite irritating as i'm sure some of you guys do so if you've got any music suggestions let me know um, i'd be happy to hear them And okay, so I hope that wasn't too jarring, but um, yeah, so as you saw, we also set up a call to arms as well, and we can also set up a perma brew. And now for tier four, exact same idea, but as you can see, we're building it up more and more. So now you can see I've placed down a couple of snowstorms. The reason for this is so I can fill up the middle triangle of water and begin to place even more tax there and it's very important actually to have some tax there okay and i've got all of these to 203 obviously for the monkey knowledge perks so that we do actually get a bit of a discounted price so make sure you're doing little stuff like that as well and then for tier four same idea um there's not much to it again we're just building up the spam
Okay, so I appreciate everyone who's made it this far along the video, but here we go. Here's the overall kind of footage of the final setup almost in place. The last thing now that I want to discuss is the way that I want to kind of stall it a little bit. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to make sure to sacrifice some stuff for Adora. Very important to keep that all the time. Also, make sure that you've got Homeland fully ready. If you don't have Homeland fully ready, that'll make things harder. But we have got two um, mob push, mob shoves, I believe they're called, sorry. Then I've got two 202 ice monkeys at the start. And now the important thing as well, which I find very useful, and it also helps a lot in normal too. If you can see next to my cripple, we have a 502 sniper as well so a main mob but this one is sat on last or set on last sorry okay it set on last can help stall really quite well and i'd recommend anyone if you've not done normal yet to go and use a 402 sniper set on last that will help stall rounds quite a lot it's not going to be as helpful here because we've got so much range going on but it is a little bit of a help also, I'm going to be using the Snowstorm ability all throughout as well. That can just add a little bit of a stall. Now, there's something I do wrong here for the first few rounds, and that is I'm using Adora's... I don't know what the ability is called, sorry. The one that looks like a trident of arrows, and she just goes absolutely crazy. I'd recommend to not use that, because it doesn't really add any boss damage, but it does take away the balloons at the start of the map. So, I'd recommend don't bother with that one. Just make sure you're using her orb ability, because that one will be very useful, okay? Then, the rest, all it is, is about using um, Homeland as often as you can and making sure you're not missing any sacrifice timings now this is something funny i did just for timings whenever i used homeland i actually used the sacrifice or sacrifice to tower which means that i'm using the sacrifice cycle way too much but we've got way too many towers anyway that we can get rid of so it just ensures that i'm not going to miss any of the uptime on it which is very important okay obviously you can be more optimal than that but this is just to also make life easy and i think sometimes with strategies like this it's better to go for a bit of the safer and cheaper or i should say cheaper but it's more expensive option i should say um, the more relaxed approach just to save your monkey money bank accounts okay because obviously you can counter many issues so yeah um, i hope this has been helpful this actual kill that i did in real time was 25 minutes long it's a straight kill um but with the lag and everything it took 25 minutes so you know that's just an artifact of playing with so many spammy towers but i will fast forward it a little bit but i just want to say thank you for everyone who stayed this far and i hope it's helped any questions please feel free to drop down in the comment section below and let me know if you like these longer style of videos when it's kind of a setup like this feel free to join the discord you've got many great members there that will be happy to help and i'll hopefully see you guys very soon